Yeah, there. Several also, several what also hit, I'm sorry. Got it. Okay, I think this is Laurel Canyon. It's going to take this right up to the 170. This is Laurel Canyon, and I'll find out where we have to go from here. No street sign, great. You have it? Get ahead? Where do you see it, Dean? Where do you see it, Dean? So, well, do you want us to go to the do you want us to go to the scene or try and find that? Roger. Okay, there's a pursuit around somewhere. Now, we should okay, point it out to me, man. I'm looking for the police activity. I don't see it. Got it, yeah. Looking for a Bank of America. Nope. Got it. Oh, I got the fire department. Uh, no, I, I haven't got the bank yet. I'm still looking for the bank. Still looking for the bank. Where's the bank? Where's the Where's the bank, man? See, you see the two fire trucks blocking the road? Okay. Okay. Okay, hang on, hang on. Got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Where is it? Where? Okay, I'm in the booth. Oh, hello, booth. I got the bank, but I don't have any of it. Uh, can you give me like 30 seconds? Okay, well, let's go. I don't can't have a lot of pictures, but I can show you uh, the bank. <coughs> Steve Laurel Canyon and Kittredge. If you can orbit a little, that'd be good.
Well, good morning, Kyle. We're looking at the Bank of America here on Laurel Canyon. This is just north of Kittredge Boulevard. And what's happened here this morning is uh, five, at least five suspects have entered the bank armed in body, body armor and uh, automatic weapons, and they have robbed the Bank of America here. here. Now, LAPD has responded in force to the scene, and let me tell you what's transpired since their arrival. What's gone on here is there's a gun battle has ensued between suspects and the police, and here's what we know so far. There are at least two officers down. Uh, one of those officers, we understand, has just been picked up by fellow officers in a uh, patrol car, and they're rushing that officer to a nearby hospital. Uh, the second officer, yet we have yet we have yet to find that second officer. Now, uh, the LAPD responded to the scene here on their first call of the of the bank being robbed, and that's when they were confronted with uh, with, with with the de uh, with the. Uh, our pilot Dean is just telling us that they're firing at us right now. So we're going to move off a little bit to the side, but we're going to continue with this picture and tell you exactly what we know. Uh, what, what, if you can go around to the other side of the building, Dean, that would be perfect, or where we were before. Um, anyway, uh, Kyle, back to you. Uh, what we know now, what's going on, is we have at least two LAPD officers down. When they were confronted with, by these suspects dressed in full body armor and AK-47 uh, uh, fire, uh, this is what we heard from the dispatcher when we were on our way over here. All officers were to stay away from the scene, were to remain low, because they were, uh, they were receiving fire from the bank, and that, was, that fire was described as automatic weapon fire, AK-47 fire, to be precise. Right now, the situation is at a stalemate. There is SWAT on the, situ on the scene here. They have not yet deployed. And of course, we will not show you that uh, deployment when it does occur. But uh, suffice to say that there is SWAT on the scene right now, and the LAPD has the bank surrounded. Now, there is another officer. The officer that was down was at the corner, a little bit away from the bank. And we've also heard information that LAPD is in pursuit of a gray vehicle, which is nearby. Uh, but they are not pulling that vehicle over yet because of the fear of, uh, uh, or the, you know, the wise choice because of the automatic weapons that have been fired so far in this in this bank robbery. Suffice to say that these bank robbers were well equipped with body armor and all the uh, paramilitary gear that goes along with that. So this was a, a highly planned a, and professional job. The problem is, of course, uh, the LAPD arrived and has foiled their plan uh, in so much as that they didn't get away with it uh, so far. Now, the, the situation is still unfolding as we arrive. I'm listening to several different radios as, uh, as we speak. And so far, that's the most current information I have for you, Kyle. Okay. You can move in a little closer if you can, Dean. It's okay, come back this way. And you go straight out this way. Good. Uh, the other chopper left. Describe it to me. Okay, go, uh, Dean, go around the other side of the building from the side. All the way around. Well, it's uh, just around the other side. That's right, Kyle. We're, we're receiving some more information now. We're trying. Yeah, they're around the other side of the building. Yes. I'm co we're coming around to it, I think, right now. That's as tight as we can get. Well, Kyle, we're trying to work our way around the other side of the bank now where we understand the second officer is, uh, is injured. Uh, we saw, we've just seen this white sedan pull up to the scene here. Now, this could be a rescue attempt or uh, we were we also were, uh, were under the impression that the uh, 
The suspects, and here we go, we have LAPD right now. Uh, okay, okay, we have some gun gunfire right now going on. We just saw some uh, puff of smoke coming out of the side of this white car. And uh, we're exchanging gunfire in the parking lot as we speak. Uh, this is a suspect we're looking at right now. It looks like. If you can turn a little bit more, Dean. Let me get a little bit better perspective on what's going on here. Yeah, we were under the we were under the impression that the uh, white vehicle was the suspect vehicle, and we can see now that this person looks like they're going to be getting into this car uh, or uh, working on a second car also. But we have seen gunfire uh, emitted from this car pointing out into the parking lot direction, and uh, of course. Very cavalier attitude right now, uh, walking around in the parking lot uh, with their automatic weapons, brandishing their automatic weapons. Uh, uh, this situation, we were also, one of the reasons we had to leave Kyle so quickly is that we were, I was getting reports from our pilot that they were uh, actually firing on us right now. Now, Dean, if we can circle back around again, we're losing it behind the tree. And yeah, circle around that way if you can. And we're going to keep an eye on these two right here. They were firing off in the direction of the police, which are, as you can see from this wider shot, they have the situation, uh, you know, well perimetered right now. But of course, now you have uh, suspects that are acting uh, uh, quite. Uh, uh, we have suspects that are acting quite brand. Okay, we're in. We're following the suspect car right now. We've seen them exchange fire with police already on at least uh, two occasions so far since we've been watching. And uh, of course, from what we've been reporting earlier, there have been two suspects down. I mean, there are two uh, police officers down already. They are opening fire. He's firing his, he's firing his weapon right now, uh, Kyle, as he runs. You can see the shells ejecting from the side, the port of the rifle as he fires and tries to get away down the side of the street. Now we've lost him behind this garbage truck or disposal truck and we're going to wait here and see what happens uh, this is it's uh, obviously an accomplice here on this white vehicle here that we're seeing now drive quite erratically possibly a wounded suspect at this point and uh, we're keeping an eye on this right now let me just take a quick look back over to the right as this situation unfolds if Dean if you could go back around again one more time It, yeah, it, what it what it's looked like what it looked like, Kyle, is originally that this car pulled up to the side of the bank, maybe to try and pick up the other suspects. And there's a gray van that that uh, gray van actually is what we heard was was being pursued earlier. I don't know if this is the same gray van, but it's unlikely that it would just come into this neighborhood like this. Now we have this vehicle taking off again. What we thought was going to happen was that this vehicle was going to come up and try and pick up that suspect that we saw brandishing the AK-47, firing indiscriminately around at uh, police officers. I'm sorry. I don't know where this other guy went. I got him. Yeah. Okay, he's got a pistol out now. Okay. Down, down. Down. You're all right. That's right, Kyle. Uh, we we were watching this suspect. That it's gone. Okay, now getting out of the car. Okay, okay, we have another okay, we have another suspect out of the car now, brandishing his AK-47.
Okay, he's injured. Well, Kyle, as you saw pretty graphically uh, just moments ago, one suspect was taken down by LAPD. This is after he, of course, emptied uh, several clips from his AK-47 in the direction of uh, police officers. And at the time uh, of his takedown, he was also firing from a, uh, a semi-automatic pistol. Now, we just saw a second suspect get out of this white car. Now he's back in and he's moving again. But when he came out of the car, he came out with his uh, assault rifle at, at full uh, port arms. He was ready to fire. And as a matter of fact, popped off a couple rounds. Now, we are seeing some other vehicles uh, drift in and out of the area. Now, this area is pretty controlled. Uh, Dean, you can start a forward, uh, forward movement very slowly, though. We don't want to get too close. Well, actually, we're about, uh, I would say, four blocks uh, east of that uh, of the bank location. This is a street that runs directly off the bank, perpendicular to Laurel Canyon. And it's uh, this uh, person, this suspect, has uh, pulled out of the parking lot, made a right turn, and has basically been traveling down that road ever since. I could see, or we could see, I should say, from the helicopter that when uh, he got out of the, uh, when this person got out of the car, he was limping. So this person has been injured. It could uh, explain part of the erratic behavior uh, that we've seen so far. Now, of course. Uh, they, the, the suspects in this crime have displayed absolutely uh, no care about uh, life or limb uh, for themselves and for anyone else. So you have to, anybody that's in this area, and you can see now that civilians are being involved in this. We're going to see this person try and take this person's car right now. Uh, absolutely try to stay out of this area if you can. We have loose, armed, and dangerous suspects in this area, and they, are, they have no... Uh, no sensibility when it comes to life. Now we're seeing some shots being taken on the front of this car. You can see these pickup truck and these people are getting out of the area. That's the thing to do, move, get out of there. This, uh, some people are realizing what they've come up against now and they're leaving the area. Yes. That's right, that's right, Kyle. Right now, we're going to see this person try and maybe get into this car, although he's going to have to get his car out of the way first. But, uh, you know, he's, there's a lot going on right here, as you uh, know and as you've seen. Uh, we still have people that are in the air that haven't been getting this word. Maybe uh, we should be, this should be going out on the radio also, that this is an area to avoid at all costs. We have loose suspects in this area, and they, they don't have any care or, uh, or anything about any human life. Now, we're going to watch this person try and get into this car and possibly drive away. Okay. Looks like uh, he's just thrown a pistol down under the under the hood of the other car. Hey, he's offloading right now, Kyle. That's, that's correct, Kyle. And okay, now we okay. Maybe no keys in this car now. So now this has become okay. Cop, police on the scene, just driving up. Bullets being exchanged, fire being exchanged. You can see a fusillade of bullets into this uh, suspect vehicle as police open fire. And you can see that the suspect is also opening fire straight through the windshield of the car, trying to, to uh, defend himself or make a last stand, as you might see. But. Uh, Okay, yeah, this is, this is, uh, they're uh, spraying fire, the, the suspect is spraying fire randomly, the police seem to be, they're taking cover behind their car and they're waiting for a shot, obviously, to try and take this very, very dangerous, armed and dangerous suspect out of circulation here, and that's exactly what they're going to do here in moments. Matter of fact, we're going to just take a little bit wider angle so you can still see what's going on, but we won't, don't want to be too graphic here as we saw in the last situation because obviously uh, these aren't people that, we're gonna, that the police are going to be able to deal with and talk out of a situation like this. They have uh, shown total disregard for human safety and uh, pedestrians and uh, citizens in the area, and obviously they've wounded, already wounded two police officers. So this is a very dangerous uh, bunch of culprits here that the police are dealing with this morning. Yeah, two two car widths uh, two car widths away. That's right, Kyle. And uh, the suspect is down in the front of that white car. You can just see. 
the top of his head there. Uh, he also, uh, the, the police now that are dealing with this suspect, uh, I could tell that they are the SWAT team, they are in uh, military uh, uniform. And he's, okay, is this, uh, do we have a suspect surrendering or is this just reloading? No, uh, looks like maybe he was just cleaning off the muzzle of his gun or something. I thought at first that he might have been surrendering. But what we have right, be right behind this palm tree, and I, I have to reiterate, we hesitate to get too close to this situation because as you heard the LAPD officer moments ago on the uh, telephone say that he, the uh, suspects have been firing in the air. Okay, now we're watching a LAPD officer go around to the side of the car, try and get a little bit better angle, and this could come to a quick conclusion uh, as we speak. Uh, Okay, they're talking to the suspect. Maybe the suspect has his hands in the air. Okay, we're going to see a surrender now. So this suspect is going to be taken into custody as we watch. Uh, what we did see earlier is uh, when, when one of the, um, when one of the uh, civilians in the area saw his car come in, uh, he saw what was going on, understood what was going on, raced out of the car. Then this suspect that the PD are now taking into custody, they're going to swarm this suspect now and take him into custody. They've just taken away his automatic weapon. What, uh, what we saw happening was we saw the suspect try to unload his munitions and his gear from the white sedan that's in the right side of your picture, and he was loading that into the pickup truck. Okay, Dean, we can move a little bit closer now, which would be uh, 12 o'clock for you, straight ahead. That's right. And uh, uh, so we're going to come in and take a little closer look now at what's going on. Now, the police are still sitting up at defensive perimeter, you can see, which uh, could indicate and probably does indicate that there are some uh, more suspects involved or at large, I should say. We've uh, seen two suspects taken down, one uh, literally taken down, one taken down into custody as we're watching right now, and uh, that would leave at least three other suspects uh, at large that we don't have information on. And uh, so right now, this is the situation here, just blocks from the bank robbery uh, on uh, Laurel Canyon, just north of Kittredge. Tell me, tell me. They can because they're going to start a SWAT operation. Okay, we're just getting a little turbulence here. It's right behind you on your right. Actually, it's 3 o'clock, Dean. It's 3 o'clock. <laughs> well, uh, Kyle, right now, this situation that we've been watching uh, unfold has uh, pretty much uh, finished right now. They have a few PD officers that are still here on the scene to, of course, to attend to the suspect. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, maybe head back over to the bank because it still seems that there's police activity going on back there. And as a matter of fact, I think that these SWAT officers that we saw uh, take this uh, suspect into uh, custody, as a matter of fact, come over here and uh, show such a strong force of uh, firepower that the suspect was uh, unwilling to uh, take it to its final conclusion, so to speak. So he was, uh, he surrendered uh, under those circumstances. Now I think that those officers have been, have been dispatched back to the bank area and let's see if we can go back over here and just get a glimpse on what the activity is over at the bank. As I said it was about four or five blocks and of course there it is there at the Bank of America where of course the situation is still unfolding. Uh, I'm not, we're, not, we're unclear at this point if there are suspects still in the bank area or uh, if uh, the other suspects uh, have fled 
in the gray van that we talked about earlier that was being pursued by LAPD officers, the fact that they were uh, reluctant to pull this van over, of course, and you can see why now by watching the last half an hour on television, uh, these suspects were certainly ruthless uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and, uh, and now this operation still goes on. I didn't hear you, Scott, sorry. Did you want to call that on, chat on the desk and tell them that? And so, because I can't do that right now. Yeah, you should. I don't know why. Well, well, Kyle, I can't. We, what we can tell you is that th there were at least five suspects to begin with on this bank robbery, and of course they were described as we've talked.